Mr. Renito Adams? Yes, I'm here, sir. As a most Jamaicans familiar with his reputation as a crime fighter can imagine, retired senior superintendent of police, Renita D. Cardova, Valentino Adams has eluded death on countless occasions during his 63 years on earth. He has been associated with bloody, violent incidents such as the shootout between police and gunmen that left 27 people dead in West Kingston in July 2001, the killing of seven men at a house in Brayton, St. Catherine, four months before, and the deaths of four people in a house at Crawl in Clarendon two years later. In all cases, Adams has insisted that his life and those of the men under his command was in danger and the law enforcers had been forced to defend themselves. But these incidents that projected an image of him as a bone hard crusader against crime were preceded by several others which, save for his agility and luck, could have resulted in aiding to the profits of the undertakers. The story next. Before we proceed, smash the like button to pieces. Leave a comment, please share the life out of this video. Feel free to subscribe for more content. Remember to turn on your notification so as to never miss another video. Let's do it. The man who led that operation joins us, former senior superintendent Renita Adams. He will share his perspective. Mr. Adams, welcome. I have had several close shaves, Adams said. Although it might seem simple, I almost got killed around 2002 when a member of the police force, a, de a detective, was shot in a bar at Cockburn Pen. We got the intelligence that the guy who did it had gone to a doctor's office along Red Hills Road. So we put up a card and outside the doctor's surgery to catch him because we didn't want to go inside. And while he was walking out of the doctor's surgery, he was being escorted out by two women. When I approached him, I said to my this guy having done that crime would have hidden his gun so we didn't approach carelessly but we dropped our guard a little he admitted when we approached the guy and said police he just took away his right hand from around one of the ladies and drew his gun and bam 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 i was leading the party in front and three shots went off and landed in my bulletproof vest i didn't even get the jaw it was my men who were with me who shot and killed him and took a 9mm pistol from him. If it weren't for the bulletproof vest, I would have died as the shots landed in the region of my abdomen. That really shook me up. The bullets threw me backwards and even though I had on the bulletproof vest, I felt that I was physically shot. If it weren't for the vest, I would have been killed. The 2001 West Kingston shooting for which a commission of inquiry was eventually held proved to be Adam's biggest challenge by his own admission. He had seen a policeman shot next to him and the incident, he said, served as an alert to police personnel that the criminal underworld had superior firepower. Many residents in Tivoli Gardens have been complaining that they are too often subjected to human rights abuses. They pointed to the 2001 operation in which 27 people died as an example. A team of policemen went into Tivoli Gardens about 5.30 in the morning and took up our positions, but waited until the day was bright enough for us to move about. We were told that drugs and guns had come in and where the things were being stored. Adams reflected on the bloody foray into the first cities west end when the search started we found one on gun and that was when the shooting started all we heard was gunshots from all directions that was between north street salt lane and wellington street the gunshots were so overwhelming that we had to retreat and we said we wanted to go to the denham town police station but we couldn't reach the station so we had to go towards Metcalf street and we used some premises and drop out close to majestic theater and tivoli courts that is where they took us on. It was 19 of us and we separated ourselves into five groups that we could defend ourselves. As for me, I've never been shot. You've never been shot? No, I, I have gone. <laughs> <laughs> we were heading to the coronation market to get out of this barrage of gunshots, which we thought was the safest route. When we reached in the vicinity of Tivoli Court, the type of caliber weapons that were being fired, we couldn't match with them at all. 
we had to lie down flat on our backs and started pushing on our backs moving towards coronation market to get out of this thing he said calls for assistance proved futile as the extraction team were stuck on the outside as the gunmen had the whole air barricaded he explained i remember coming on the intense pressure Yes, you know, okay. I, I, I have developed, I read a lot and I, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I studied um, criminology and mm -hmm. how criminals behave and so on. So probably our, I was more lucky. We couldn't move anymore and I said to the guys, we are going to rise up and return the fire. We are either going to die now or get out of it. So we raised our heads and opened the fire in the direction of Tivoli Courts and immediately after we did that they started firing from behind us and we had to lie down again and started to move on our tummies this time. It took us 7 hours from Tivoli Courts to the coronation market and when it was getting late and they were rearming themselves a lull occurred Adam's Discord. The lull that he referred to was caused by the arrival in Tivoli Gardens of then Member of Parliament and Opposition Leader Edward Siaga, who would try to intervene and end the conflict. The inquiry was later told, but that suspension of gunfire, Adam said, did not last long. We heard that it was Siaga who had come in and they eased on the fire to make him come in. So we got up and moved towards the coronation market. When we reached between Tivoli Court and Ebenezer Lane, it was a barrage of fire again. Again, luck was on Adam's side, literally. I remember a shot went through my bulletproof vest and straight into Corporal Henry, who was behind me and he was shot in the groin. I had, uh, you know, at least two policemen being shot and killed right around me. I remember when we were in Western Kingston and we went to re retrieve guns and ammunition and drugs had just recently come in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to cut it short, we were attacked. Corporal Henry said, Mr. Adams, we get shot. And I said, come on, man, let us move. When I look on my shoulder, you could see where the shots went right through the shoulder, toward the vest and shot Henry. We got assistance with a vehicle and sent him off to KPH where he was pronounced dead. When I got the message that he had died, I said, well, we are all going to die today, but I am not staying under this pressure voluntarily. So Adam said he just started moving tactically, firing at the men in Tivoli Court as his team moved to Ebenezer Lane, where an inspector of police who had come down from the mobile reserve began to lay down cover fire. We were going to cross Bustamante Highway and end up on Darling Street. And when I sent the first batch of men across, it was pure gunshots. And I remember right, uh, right along Spanish Town Road in the vicinity of this whole theater, is it? Mm -hmm. um, Ambassador, the what, Majestic? Majestic. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and um, they started firing from every angle. Seems that they wanted me personally, as when I moved across, there was even load of barrage of shots. And I heard Constable Brown, who was beside me, said, Soup, I got shot, you know. Brown had been shot in his side. When we went upstairs coronation market, I thought this thing would be finished. People talk about this gun that they found down there only came in 2010, but I saw that gun being fired at us. It was on a tripod. When it fired into the coronation market while we were upstairs, pieces of the wall were broken off. At that time, I thought it was a grenade launcher because every time it fired, it shook the place. And when I saw the men firing a gun like that, and the other types of guns that they were firing. I said that if this is what Jamaica has come to, Jamaica will pay dearly with those people with the type of ammunition they had. Adam's reason. Actually, saw the gunshots being fired and piercing the fire, the, the asphalt. During the lull in gunfire, Siaga had offered Adams and his men a safe passage out of Tivoli Gardens, something that Siaga later admitted to. But the gesture was refused by Adams, who felt that the offer was made only to him and not the men on his command. When he offered me safe passage, I said, No, I am here on government business. I am an agent of the state. We have intelligence that guns are here and we are here to retrieve them. <laughs> he told me that we could go up Bond Street and I said, Mr. Siaga, the government vehicles are here. The policemen that I lead are here. 
I come here to do a spot of duty and I don't want no safe passage. I would rather be killed here today. So you left that the time gunshot started again. I remember seeing a woman with no fewer than six sticks of dynamite tied together and we observe her coming towards the post and she lit the dynamite and threw it upstairs the coronation market and it exploded. A journalist lady who was there with us said to me, Mr. Adams, we are going to die. And I had to counsel her and the others and tell them to cool off. There was gunshots firing from all directions and we had to return the fire, he recalled. He escaped unarmed at the eventual end at that volatile standoff. Mr. Adams, I want to go on there. The shooting in Brayton, where seven young men were killed a mere two months before the West Kingston uprising, was also a situation that presented a clear and then present danger to the security forces, Adams insisted. Reports were that a group of men had gone to the Above Rocks police station in St. Catherine and shot and killed a constable. They also shot an ex-customs officer and a woman who was in a phone booth. According to Adams, information led police to one of the alleged shooters who was staying at Cassava Peace in North St. Andrew. The young man took police to Red Hills Road where they pick up another of the suspects who pointed police to another individual in Cumberland, Portmore, St. Catherine. We were then taken to a place in Brayton on uh, Fifth Seal Way where we encircled the house. I rapped on the window, said, I am seen as superintendent Renita Adams. I am here to execute a warrant. At that time, Three shots zipped past my face and we had to take cover. My men started to pepper the place and when the shooting ended we found the men dead in the house. It was luck that saved me as if I was standing right in front of the window when I called out to them inside, I would have been killed. Regarding the equally controversial shooting at Crawl, Adam said that apart from one of the women who died, all the others were involved in the attack on the police. He said had gone to the community as information reaching them was that two expatriates were to be kidnapped as they left the gold mine in the district by then wanted man Washington Chen Chen Douglas. We heard that Chen Chen was staying there and extorting money from the gold mine and demanding to be employed. Commissioner Francis Forbes asked me to investigate the matter and I set up a raiding party in waiting for the men. Just as the white men were coming down, they stopped and we came up and rushed into the yard. I saw Chen Chen with two guns, one of them a rifle. Two other guys, a Rasta man and a brown guy had shotguns. As we moved into the yard, they opened fire and I went behind a breadfruit tree. At the end of the shooting, three guns were recovered and four, and four people died. One of the ladies who had no intelligence why she was there, probably she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. But the other woman was the girlfriend of Chen Chen who used to buy gunshots and collect extortion money for him. Adams maintained Chen Chen who escaped the incident was killed by his cronies not long after. But the St. Elizabeth born Adams had uh, come close to meeting his maker long before all those blistering episodes. He has been involved in shootouts that he said sent rivers of perspiration down his spine. But he survived to raise toast to his continued existence. He still remembers vividly an incident in 1975 which opened his eyes to how thin the line is between life and death. The history, the closest, however. Right was when in 1975 with the same Tony Hewitt here mm -hmm. was leading the squad. The JDF had formed a squad to include traffic police, CIB, motorized patrol, all the elements in the force. That when we met up on a particular situation, we had people who could deal with that. At the time, Adam said, many known criminals were driving the Ford Cortina motor vehicle. On Christmas Eve, we were patrolling the Agley Park area and being led by Tony Hewitt, who was a corporal at the time. We got information that four men traveling in a green cartina had just robbed three places in halfway tree and they were coming down Agley Park Road. That time the three miles roundabout was not what it is now. You didn't have the dual carriageway either. He said the team set up a roadblock along Agley Park Road side of three miles where they got further intelligence that the target vehicle was coming. 
in those days we operated with plain cars and in plain clothes as we saw the car coming tony drove our car right across the road and the boys having seen that made a deliberate dangerous right turn into the nova scotia bank premises immediately they ran out of the car initially the boys opened fire on us we returned the fire and three were immediately shot dead and three firearms recovered but one of them could not be found I remember that the bank premises had a number of broad trees, so a policeman named Jack and I were searching for that man. My view was that the lilies were so thick that one of the boys could have been hiding in there. I was in front and had my 38 in my right hand and I used my left hand to turn away the lily tree. All I heard was bow and the piece of lily in front of me was shut off and drop right in front of me so i threw myself back put my two hands in my lap and haul up as close as possible my feet to my ears making myself a smaller target the guy was firing a nine millimeter in a split second when i saw the guy i actually saw him going to pull the trigger as he fired the shot i shifted jack who had a shotgun eventually killed him adams also survived an onslaught by the feared gangster sylvester punky wint from the Jakes Road Mountain View Avenue area in April 2000. Punky was cut down by security forces during a raid but not before he unleashed a barrage of bullets at Adams and his team when they went to his house to apprehend him. Adams said he was also tested during another showdown with one of St. Catherine's toughest gunmen but he passed with flying colors. You know, I have never taken notice as long as I came out of a situation alive, I never really reflected on it. I understand. You know, I have saved a lot of policemen's mm -hmm. life to one of that by taking action mm -hmm. uh, that they could not have taken. But In 1997 in Spanish Town, this guy, Kemel Garden, whom they call Jackie, was in charge of all criminal activities before the clans and one other people started. He had a gang called the Jackie Gang, which operated out of Homestead, Olaba Road, Valdez Road. When I went to Spanish Town, I went to Jackie and told him that I had intelligence that he was the man leading a gang and now that I have come, he is stop all the gang activities because we were going to be resolutely dealing with it. The boy looked at me and told me, Adams, you and I are not staying here, you know? I said, what do you mean? And he said, a plenty police come and have to leave and you are going to leave too and if you don't leave then something else will take place <laughs> we started investigating this guy and i remember one night they had a dance by oxford road and he was there blocking all the streets although we gave instructions for him to leave the street we didn't have the noise abatement at then the more the danger confronts me as it relates to criminal elements the is the more beer fierce right. i become it's a he was in a group with a lot of bad men and I just penetrated the group along with my bodyguards and I kicked him down flat on the ground. And the story from that night onward in the whole of Spanish town was that a bad man policeman come here and kicked down Jackie and he couldn't respond. One night Adams was on patrol along St. John's Road and Valdez Road when he got a call that Jackie was coming on a motorcycle and he had on him a 45 Magnum and an Eklan catch pistol that the police had tried to find in successive raids but never did. We set up a roadblock right at Valdez Road where he lived and St. St. John's Road. We heard that he was coming from St. John's Road. We saw this bike coming at high speeds and when he saw us he just jumped off the bike dropping it and shouted to me Adams I want this and bam 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 gunfire in my direction. When I saw him draw the gun I threw myself to the left and the rest of the policemen opened fire at him and he was shot and killed and the two guns recovered. Ironically, we found a map in his pocket with a path well drawn to my house in St. Diego Heights, Mark Adams house. The criminal elements that we confront nowadays, they are, they are so brazen and they never give up. Who also survived mortar and grenade attacks from rebels when he went to the African country of Namibia as part of the United Nations peacekeeping mission in 1989. Having had to face the fury of other gunmen including the feared Starkey, Sandokan, Nathaniel, Natty Morgan from Riverton City, Jigo Garden from Seaview Gardens and another Spanish town gangster called F-Up. 
who used to pull off a robbery every Tuesday night for an extended period. Adams is now enjoying another phase of his life, running his security business and caring for those close to him. Was pronounced dead and arrival at the Kingston Public Hospital. But we at the bridging, then the accident that just transpired, they know him reach a public already. Well, is that I was trained to say? It's not me right this script, you know, Your Honor. Thank you for watching the video. Drop a like and a comment down below and consider subscribing if you haven't done so as yet. Until next time, walk good.